The Bird's Relative, written by Idris Shah and narrated by Jacqueline Cloak. There was once a rich merchant whose prized possession was an extremely intelligent cockatoo. The beautifully feathered bird occupied pride of place in the merchant's equally splendid house, where it was routinely shown off to guests of the highest social standing. One day, when the man was about to embark on an overseas trip, he said to the bird, In this upcoming voyage, I will be visiting your homeland. Is there anything that I can bring back for you? Without a second thought, the bird asked for its freedom. The bird had no trouble making itself understood to the merchant because, as I have already explained, it was an exceptionally clever bird. I simply couldn't bear to live without you, said the merchant. So please, ask me for another favour. Cocking its head to one side, as birds of its kind often do, the feathered captive thought for a moment. If you can't give me my freedom, perhaps you would be kind enough to go to the jungle where I was captured and tell my relatives what has become of me. Delighted to be able to grant a favour that was within his power, the merchant agreed. And sure enough, after a lengthy sea voyage and having enlisted an army of local guides, the merchant finally made it to the exact place where his pet had been captured. And here he lost no time in calling out. Friends, I have come to inform you that a relative of yours, a fine-looking cockatoo, now lives with me and is my very favourite possession. His words were hardly spoken when a wild bird, just like his own, fell senseless out of a tree and onto the ground at his feet. Correctly assuming that this must be a relative of his own treasured bird, the merchant did all he could to save the unfortunate creature. He blew gently into its nostrils. He massaged its tiny feet. He fanned its crested head. But nothing revived the bird. And the merchant was soon forced to accept the lifeless body for what it was. With a heavy heart, he made the long journey home, back to the comfort of his very own sitting room, where he was reunited with his favourite pet. The bird asked the man whether he brought good news from its relatives. Not really, admitted the merchant. I told some birds whom I took to be your relatives that you were my favourite possession in the whole world. But as soon as I did so, a bird that looked just like you fell dead at my feet. He went on to describe in detail how he had attempted to revive the wild bird, but alas, had eventually been forced to admit that there was nothing he could do. And at this point, the merchant's story was ended by a thud, as his beloved pet bird collapsed in exactly the same manner as its relative. And no amount of blowing in its nostrils, massaging its tiny feet, or fanning its crested head would revive him. And soon the merchant was forced to conclude that his bird had died of shock having heard of its relative's sudden end. Mournfully, he placed the bird's lifeless body on the windowsill, where it instantly revived and flew into a nearby tree. From the tree, perched just out of reach, the bird said, What you failed to understand when you were in the jungle was that by faking its death, my relative was sending me instructions on how to behave in order to end my captivity. And off flew the bird, free, at last. The End <laughs>